Welcome to another session of Visual X, where we look at trigonometry. What we want to look at this morning, Sifunuk Bonaje, would how do we deal with problems actually using a diagram? As Kumbulut diagram, Masasi Enza, as if I no big ape, contact with restriction as a sky to which see if in which quadrant a diagram it. I guess we're in this bonello. This was taken from the uh, supplementary exam March 2009. Yeah, it is. 13 sine alpha minus 5 is equal to 0. And tan beta is equal to minus 3 over 4, where both alpha and beta are between 90 and 270. Let's watch here. We're given two different angles. There is an alpha here and there is a beta here. Hence, I'll use two diagrams. One will accommodate alpha and the other one will accommodate beta. The, 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 the trick is, remember these are ratios. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Ka ka cos is adjacent of hypotenuse. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So you must be able to see which side will be opposite, which one which, which one will be adjacent. If I look at it like this, I don't. I pu, I've got to put it in standard form, as in the definition. If I arrange this one first, remember I'm looking. For, I'm gonna be you, you, first one looking for cos theta. If I arrange that one, arrange it in that form. So this will be. Uh, 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 sine alpha is equals to you take 5 that side it will be 5 divided by you divide by 13 on both sides divided by 13 now it is in the standard form because i know i know the definition of sine so ka toa so if i'm dealing with sine i must know which one is opposite which one is hypotenuse so i've got sine alpha this is opposite this is hypotenuse remember this trigonometry happens in a right angle triangle because you'll never find hypotenuse in another triangle but the right angle triangle now we've got it in this form uh, let's 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 re remember this is also looking for alpha let's arrange this one as well if we arrange this other one what will it be oh it's already arranged it's perfect this one is tan beta tan is opposite over adjacent so that's opposite this is adjacent remember we've got four quadrants in our cartesian plane i've got to put my diagrams now for this one as well as that one let's start with the first one if i do my diagram here ah all right this is important as well as I'm dealing with alpha and this restriction becomes important. So you use both of them to locate the quadrant. Remember, look, look at the sign here. How is this sign? This sign is opposite, is positive. Where is sign positive? Remember that uh, others usually say, all stops to Chatsworth. What is this saying to me? All ratios are positive in this quadrant. Only sign is positive. Only tan is positive in this one, and only cos is positive. Now, when we talk of a sign that is positive, which quadrants are where sign is positive? It will be positive in this quadrant and the first quadrant. So, sign is opposite in two quadrants. Yet, I can't sketch my my diagram in two quadrants. How do I know where between these two will 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 my diagram be? This is going to assess me. This is going to assist me because it is telling me that this alpha is between 90 and 270. Which are those quadrant? Between 90 and 270. So you use both this and this interval to locate the quadrant where you put your diagram. We are saying it is between 90 and 270. Remember this is 0, 90, 180, 270 and 360. So where is 90 and between 90 and 270? It's between 90 and 270. So it's these two quadrants. So it is this one and this one. Ah, now I can see where will I sketch my diagram. You are going to sketch your diagram where you've got two ticks, more than one. So I can't do it here. I can't, there are more ticks here. There. That's where I'll be sketching my diagram. Let's do it. Uh, I will sketch my diagram in this quadrant. This is a right angle triangle. The first part of our trigonometry uses a right angle triangle. Which angle are we dealing with? We're dealing with, with alpha in this particular case. This is my alpha. It is in the second quadrant. It is in the second quadrant where sign is positive. It can either be this one or this one. But when we use this one, it tells us exactly that it will be positive in the second quadrant. Now, 
source of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So my alpha is here, this will be opposite, this will be hypotenuse, which is 5 in this particular case, 5 over 13. So opposite over hypotenuse. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. In this particular case, it will be 13. Ah, there's something missing here. We don't have the the, 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 the axis this side. We know our y is 5, we know our hypotenuse is, is 13, but we are short of this. What do we use to find the third side? To There's one thing I know. This side, this side will be negative, x, this side will be positive. So the value that I'm looking for here will be negative. So there's no way that you can find a positive value on the negative x axis. So we know that the x that we are looking for here is going to be negative. Do I need that x? You are likely going to require to find it. Because look at what we are looking for here. We are going to be looking for cos alpha. What is the definition of cos? It is adjacent over hypotenuse. I do have the hypotenuse, this one, but I don't have the adjacent. So for me to solve this, I must have this third side. So how do I go, how do I go about finding this third side? I go back to my grade 8, grade 9, use the theorem of Pythagoras. What is this saying? The Pythagoras theorem says the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So you have that side, you have this side, then you can find this unknown side. Let's do the same. Uh, let's find this side first. We said we're going to say uh, 13, uh, this side squared, which is x squared, plus that side squared, plus 5 squared, will be equals to 13 squared. Right. All right, we, we, we are just looking for x. We know that x squared will be equals to 13 squared. What is 13 squared? It is 169. Then take uh, 5 squared, that side would be negative uh, 25. Remember that this, this was x. This was x squared before, so I put a square root this side. This, my x, then will be equals to, uh, what is 169? 9 minus uh, 5, it's 4. Yes, it's 144. Square root of 144. Remember, when you talk of a square root, it is plus or minus. It is plus or minus. Then my value of x in this particular case will be, um, I know that x this side is negative, so plus will fall out, will only deal with negative. So it is 144, 12 times 12 is 144, so it will be a minus 12. That's the value of this x here. I now got this value here as minus 12. Once you've got all those three dimensions, you can, you, can, you can solve any problem. Let's look at the first thing that we are looking for here. We are looking for cosine of alpha, 6.2.1. We are looking for cos alpha. What is the definition of cos? Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Which side is adjacent here? Adjacent is minus 12 over what is hypotenuse over 13 we can ask we can respond to any question because i've got all the dimensions that i need now let's look at let's look at it again what is it that we have here we've got sign with what sign now we're looking for cause in this quadrant what is positive in this quadrant it is only sign so when it asks you about cause in this quadrant Definitely it must be negative because cosine is negative in this quadrant. You solve the problem, you know the idea that the solution that I must get here, it must be negative. If I'm talking about tan in this quadrant, it will also be negative. But when you talk about sine, all students take coke, so sine is positive in the second quadrant. Now I want us to move on to the next problem, which is number two in this particular case. What are they looking for? 6.2.2? 6.2.2 they were looking for ah uh, cos into alpha plus beta this is what we are looking for cos into alpha plus beta do we have the diagram for beta let's create a diagram for beta first uh, let, let, let's let's do this thing uh, 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 remember this is what we'll be looking at when we talk of beta beta so this is going to assist me to locate where will I find the diagram. I've got four quadrants. All ratios are positive in this quadrant. Only sine is positive in this one. Tan is positive and cosine is positive in that, in, that, in that quadrant. So where would I put the diagram where tan is negative? If, you're, if you don't, if, if, if you've forgotten, let me put it here. All Alright, we are looking for a, a, a position where 
tan is negative. Tan is positive here, yeah? tan is positive here. Yeah. So where tan is negative, it is in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. I make six, it is negative in this quadrant. But you can't simply put your diagrams in two, in two, in two quadrants. You've got to identify exactly where you will, will you put the diagram. This is going to assist me, the restriction. So you don't only look at that, where tan is negative, but you also look at the restriction because it will guide you to the exact quadrant where you will draw the diagram. Let's look at this one. We've got uh, beta is between 90 and 270, between 90 degrees and 270. It's between these two quadrants. So it is between these two quadrants. Ah. I can see now where will I sketch my diagram where there are more ticks. There are more ticks in the second quadrant. So I'm going and, and, and in that quadrant, tan is negative. Hence, we'll put it in the second quadrant. Uh, let's get our diagram. Remember in this case, we're talking about beta, which is that angle. Let's label the two sides that we already have. Remember, tan is opposite over adjacent. Do I have tan is opposite over adjacent? Tan is opposite over adjacent. One must be negative, one must be positive. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So this is opposite, this is adjacent. What is opposite there? It is 3. I can't put minus 3 there because this y is above a negative. So tan is opposite of adjacent. So adjacent must be negative because x's that are here are negative. So it is minus 4. Right. If you check, look at this one. We are short of the third side. How do you find the third side? Go back to the Pythagoras theorem. So it crops up everywhere in your trigonometry. How do you find this side? Oh, I can see this one. This is a 3, 4, 5 triple. But let's work it out. We know that this side squared that we are looking for, the hypotenuse. Uh, let's write it down. This is r squared. r squared is equals to x squared plus y squared. What, what is this? This is Pythagoras. Right? Uh, we're looking for r squared. So r squared is equals to, what do we have in x? It's minus 4, which is 16 in this particular case. Minus 4 squared is 16. 3 squared will be 9. What is 16 plus 9? It is 25. So r squared is equals to 25. Therefore, r is equals to plus or minus square root of 25. What is square root of 25? r is equals to 5. You make it positive because r is a distance. Radius is a distance from the center of a circle to the circumference. So r will always be positive because a distance is always positive. So that's the value of r. We do have r now. Then we can respond to any question that they are asking us. But let's look at what we have there. Remember your background, your basics for trigonometry. When I look at this, what topic do I see? Ah, I see a topic called uh, compound angles. This is a compound angle of cos. How do you spread it? Cos, cos, change sign, sign, sign. That's how you spread it. Let's do this thing. So if you can, I see that this is a double angle. This is a compound angle for cosine. So it will be cos alpha cos beta because it's c you change the sign so it's minus cos cos sine alpha sine beta that's the rhythm of a cos it is cos cos change sign sine sine what is the rhythm for sine it is sine cos cos sine that's how you remember it remember you're given this in your formula sheet at the back of your your exam paper or in front right this is what we have we need we need to to to, to to solve this. All right, let's see what we, we, we it's about five marks, okay. Uh, we've got our diagram now. What is cos alpha? <laughs> Remember that you've just solved it. What was the answer here? Cos alpha. Cos alpha was minus 12 over 13. We've already found the question, this one. So wherever I see cos alpha, I'm gonna put minus 13 over 12. Let's do that. Uh, so this is minus uh, 12 over 13. This is my cos alpha. What is cos beta? Have I done any cos beta? 
When they talk of beta, I come to this, uh, this diagram. When they talk of uh, alpha, I come to this diagram. What is, what is cos? Cos is adjacent of hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent of hypotenuse. So it's minus 4 over 5. So this becomes minus 4 over 5 minus sine alpha. When it's alpha, I come to this diagram. Ah, I already have sine alpha. So sine alpha is 5 over 13. So I put minus 5 over 13. Let's look at sine beta now. Sine beta, this is where beta is. What is the definition for sine? It is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine beta, so, so it's opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. It's 3 over 5 in that particular case. It is 3 over uh, 5. Right, that's what we have. Then it becomes calculator work. You come to your, to your solution. Let, let's, let's work it out quickly. All right, when, when we multiply those two, let's see what we get. We've got 12 times 4. I've got a 48 this side. Over 13 times 5. 65. Minus. 13 times 5, 13 times 5, so it's going to be 65 as well. And 5 times 3, it's 15. Or I could have done, done them, dealt with them, because I see the denominators are the same. It makes life easier. So both of them are over 65. What is 48 minus uh, 15? 8 minus 5, it is 3. 4 minus 1, it is also 3. So this is what it will become. Remember, it was just cos into alpha plus beta. We used our diagrams where we talked of alpha, you go to alpha diagram, where you talk of beta, you go to beta diagram. The key to solving this kind of problems, there are two. You arrange this in a normal form first, in this form. You check whether this ratio, this sine alpha, is positive or negative. If it is positive, it will be the first and the second quadrant. But you can't draw diagrams in two quadrants. You further look at this restriction. It says alpha is between 90 and 270, 90 and 270. So you'll have two ticks on the second diagram, on the second quadrant, that's where you'll sketch your diagram. Find the third side using Pythagoras theorem, then you can solve any problem. Thank you.